Welcome to the second session of getting started with Plexus 2D. In this session, we're going to talk about the general overview of the Plexus software. This session will cover the Plexus 2D workflow, how we can separate between model creation and inspecting the results. We start with the input module where we can do the pre-processing in five different steps. After running a calculation, you will get the results using the Plexus output program. And here we're going to first focus more on the Plexus input introduction with a general user interface overview, the explorers of the model, and finally the command line. The workflow of Plexus 2D consists of two parts. The pre-processing, where you're actually going to create the model. So here we define the actual physical representation of the problem. And second stage is the definition of the building process. What's the initial situation? And then we can simulate the different construction stages. When that is done, we can start the calculation. After the calculation is finished, we can start the post-processing. We can view and inspect the results. And here we can have different views, like the entire model, at a specific moment during construction, like what's the settlement after the first excavation what's the settlement after loading our foundation and we can also follow specific points during the whole construction process and you think about settlement versus time profiles when you're building an embankment and under in soil conditions when we separate the pre-process calculation and post process we can first do the model creation do in plexus input after the input is defined we can start a calculation and finally, we do the post-processing in the output program where we can inspect and view the results. Now, if we look at the five steps that we can do in the pre-processing step in Implexus input, there are five working modes we can recognize. We have two blue modes. The first one is the soil mode. Here we define our soil layers, what's the uh, soil layering profile that we have. And then we're going to define the other parts of the model setup. And that's the uh, definition of, for instance, structural elements loading conditions, boundary conditions. Here we set this up in structures mode. And these two modes, the soil mode and structures mode, will define the geometry of your model. When that is done, we can go to the mesh mode. We're actually going to create the finite element mesh, then followed by the flow conditions mode, where we can set up the configuration needed for groundwater conditions, flow conditions, and finally definition of construction stages we can do in the stage construction mode where we can set up our different calculation phases where we can simulate construction in different stages. Once that is done, we start the calculation process and here in the post-processing, we can inspect the results. We can look at the deformation profile of, uh, of an analysis, look at the settlements caused by a deep excavation. We can look at access port development in a road embankment, for instance. So here we can actually inspect all the results and what the behavior of the model is. If we zoom in on the Plexus input program, so here I loaded the Plexus input program. Plexus input program shows a few items. We can recognize the, the menu bar. We can see the general toolbar where we have uh, options as opening a model, saving a model, Undo redo behavior and zoom and pan options. Below that, we can find the mode switches. So here we can separate the five steps that we model our finite element model. So we can recognize the soil mode, structures mode, mesh mode, flow conditions mode, and the stage construction mode. Of course, the biggest area here we can see is the drawing area. Here we can actually define our 2D cross section. Just left of this drawing area, we can see there's a toolbar which is specific for every mode. On the left hand side, you will see two explorers. On the top, the selection explorer, and on the bottom, the model explorer. The model explorer, which is the lower one of the two, it gives a graphical overview of the complete model and all the objects that it contains. So you can 
look at it as the data structure of the model that we are defining, where we can recognize the geometry, which is then separated in points and lines, and we can drill down all the way to the point, and from the point we can even access their individual components as the X and the Y coordinate. The Selection Explorer has the same functionality as the Model Explorer, but it's only showing the properties of the current selection of objects. So if in the draw drawing area we select something, we are actually going to just see for the highlighted in red objects, these properties in the Selection Explorer. And both these explorers can be used for managing any object created in the model. So it can show the number of materials and the number of loads. Um, we can show, hide or even delete items here from these trees. We can click on an item and rename it. Or we can even change properties of model items. Like for instance, we can change the load value. And of course, we can change all the other properties as well. We might even want to change the material data set. And we can also do that directly here from the Selection Explorer. Finally, at the bottom, you will see the command line. The command line is the center of all changes in the Plexus model. Any action that you will do using the mouse, using the keyboard, using these model explorer, selection explorer, these are translated into commands and executed in this command line. Now, of course, you can also directly type your command using the command line. So really at the bottom, we can just uh, use a command, for instance, to create a new point, we just type in point, then the coordinate, x coordinate, y coordinate, and we hit enter, and you can see we have a new point. Directly here, you can also see in the session tab all the commands which are executed in the current session. So you can see that we just added a new point, and it also gives feedback of what has been added. If you look at the model history, we can see all the commands executed in the entire project history. So with that, we can trace back what happened before and what kind of changes have been made. Now, if you go to the help menu item command reference, you can find all the available commands and the syntax needed to create these commands. So that concludes this session of the general overview. In the next session, we will focus on the first step in the creation of our model, the soil mode.